Hello, it's me again, back for more. Tonight we're going to be chatting to Adrian Utley, who is the uh, guitarist, uh, best known for his work with Portishead. But he's also, hello, um, but he's also um, a very uh, accomplished musician, uh, <laughs> as well as being a guitarist. Um, no, he's... Um, He's also a collector of synths and a producer uh, and a bit of a general hero, really. I'm just getting my business sorted out here. How is everybody doing? Uh, everybody all right? Uh, Adrian's joined, so I'm just going to connect him. There he is. Oh, no, hold on. Yeah, go live with Adrian. There we go. I'm just waiting for Adrian to say hello. Um, I hope everyone's doing okay. Um, hello. There he is. <laughs> hello. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm all right. This is mad. Oh, hang on. Have you done one of these before? No. No. That's amazing. It's quite quite good fun. <laughs> and the only thing that's, that can be a bit of a ball like is the reception if the internet can be a bit if the internet can be tricky but if, as long as the internet's alright it's fun <laughs> yeah yeah cool seems alright so, so far yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, you're um, you're in the studio from the yeah place. yeah is that is that in your house it is yeah brilliant it's the top of the house um I used to have two floors, but now we've got five kids, so my drum room's now a bedroom, and uh, so now I've got, I've basically got two rooms left, I think. You're right, it's sort of whittling down. You're very pixelated, are you on Wi-Fi? Probably, yeah. What should I be on? No, that sounds fine. Sometimes Wi-Fi works better. I don't know whether it's better to have Wi-Fi or, or uh, net, the phone network, depends on your reception, I guess. Yeah, let me just... I can't really see you. Can't you? Hang on. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Ah, okay. Hang on. Let me just mess about a sec. Okay, I don't know if you can still see me, but um, let's hope it's not. Um, let's hope we're not going to have too many internet internet issues today. Yep, yeah, that's a bit better. Still quite pixelated. Is that Still quite pixelated, but you're there. Is it? But yeah, I can. Yeah, I can see you though. Can you see me? It's quite. Yeah, I can see you really well. It's okay. um, Bristol's got crappy internet. Oh, has it? Well, sometimes, yeah, it's rubbish. The whole uh, of Bristol. Well, I think particularly my room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when Is they that still... any yeah, when they built my studio, they they said to me, "Do you want to have these kind of like hardwired Ethernet?" ports in the studio and I was just like nah and they're like you know cat they're called cat ports or something like that yeah I know proper I internet. and I was like nah I don't think I do because I just think I need to be like off the internet as much as I can like when I'm in the studio I just I want to not be on the internet and they're like okay well if you're sure and the guy was baffled that I would said no but I just insisted that no and of course now I'm sort of doing loads of this stuff I'm like fuck I wish I'd said yes because <laughs> I've got no bloody internet you know <laughs> yeah I know it's rubbish isn't it um <laughs> how you doing man what are you doing then uh, I'm doing all sorts of stuff, really. Um, I saw you melt yourself the, down thing with the four the live connected. Stream. Yeah, that, that totally worked because I tried to do an in C with loads of people on Zoom, and it was just like pure white noise, which is kind of okay, but yeah. <laughs> not what you intended. <laughs> no, we did that. Um, we did we filmed ourselves individually, and then put it together later. Wow. So. Do you yeah. have a click or, or a track? Yeah, or... so Adam, we started with the drummer. Yeah. And then he sent it to me, and I put all the guide saxophones on. And then and then we part, we sort of sent it around, and everybody filmed themselves recording Doing their that. parts, basically. Yeah. And then we sent it to Ben Hillier, who mixed it. Fantastic. So we were able to sort of make it sound reasonably well recorded, even though that, I mean... Adam was in his studio, the drummer was in his studio, I was in my studio, um, 
but then you know other other people were just kind of at home <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it, was, I saw it, that. It, it worked really well it, it's amazing you know i think if you've got a good mixer you can make as long as you've got a reasonable signal you know you can make things you can make anything sound good really so yeah, it works yeah yeah it works. i think with the um if you do a a live thing on jam kazam or something like that you need an ethernet you need ethernet basically it won't um, work on wi-fi no, Wi-Fi is too flaky, apparently. Yeah. Well, that's too my flaky. experience of it. Even just trying yeah. to get email sometimes, you know. Yeah, yeah. So like yeah. an Ethernet cable. Um, it's, I just got an Ethernet cable. I haven't used to started using it yet, but that's the, that's the secret with that. But Jam Kazam works with your sound card. Like it will scan your equipment and work with your microphones and stuff. Your computer. Amazing. Yeah, and then you broadcast live to to YouTube, I think. Um, right. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I wanted to say, I wanted you to show me around the studio, but you're so blurry. I can't. Is that you've got see. a desk behind you? You've got a, quite an attractive looking desk behind you. Yeah. What's that? That looks like. Can you see desk. that? Yeah, I can see the. I can see that it looks old and it looks analog. It is. It's an old it, Trident. Um, right. Uh, I've had it. Oh, I've had it probably twenty years. Wow. Yeah, it's cool. It's from the 80s. I mean, I really love it, you know. Uh, it's not a yeah. neat or anything. Yeah, you can, can you see it? Yeah, it looks quite neavy, but I don't know what else on my elbow when it comes to that. <laughs> it's certainly not a neave. I wish it was, but there are, I have got some. Hang on, does this go around backwards? Yeah, if you flip it, top left, there should be a... Got it. Yeah, there you go. There's some neave stuff. Uh, no, here. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's neave. This is old cow rep, which is like neave. Right, okay. So, Audix, where is it? There you go. Audix, like me. Right, yeah. Yeah. Nice. All sorts of shit there. Yeah, I Old just stuff. normally got, I just normally see those as on on my screen as a sort of virtual. Yeah, thing. yeah, like a plug-in thing. Yeah. yeah. Especially that's well, a compressor, isn't it? Is that a CLA compressor? Uh, which one? The one? At the top here. Up, up, up. Isn't there. This one. Yeah, yeah. What's that? That one. That's a that's a Teletronics LA2. Oh, right. Super rare sixties compressor. It's lovely. Yeah, wow. loads of stuff. I, I actually bought that from the studio that we used for dummy. Right, there were two, wow. and we used them on everything really. Um, certainly Beth and uh, they were the studio closed down, and I said to Beth, "You've got to have one of these. I'm having one. You've got to have the other one. It's you know they don't come up that often. The old ones. So, and right. I've had it ever since then. Really, yeah. Wow, I see. Yeah. old. Yeah. Um, What's that? Uh, Pi compressors. They're oh, yeah. hard to find. Yeah, Ben will have all this stuff. I've well, Ben's got more. Ben's got his 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 gear is kind of split between stu two studios. So um, I've been in his studio. Is it the pool or something? Yeah, he's got one called the pool, which is in London, and he's got another one in uh, in in uh, well, it's near Ditchling, near near Lewis. Um, right, which is where, near where he lives, where he works most of the time, and he's got quite a bit of stuff. But he's got these, these lovely Studa desks in there. Um, Has he? Uh, yeah. Nice. So he's, two, he's got two little Studa desks. So. Um, in his home one, or at home. Yeah, home. Uh, yeah, in the home. It's not really a home. It's home one though. It's more like it's a barn, sort of about five miles from his house. But it's, it's pretty fantastic. Amazing. Yeah, it's lovely. And he's got you've got one of those um, the joystick synths, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's got one of those as well. This one. That's this is, I tell you, this is quite cool. I'm going to flip that round again. Nerdery. Um, yes, amazing. Look at that. One of them. Yeah, yeah. this, right? Th these were made by EMS um, in the s late 60s. This is a, like really, it's a 1969, this one, so really early. And I went and invent wow. um, um, interviewed the inventor oh, wow. um, of it. Peter Zinoviev, who's cool, makes um, cool electronic gear, and he signed the back for me. Oh wow! Which is really cool. And he said, and we discovered that we'd been at the same school. He was there. He's about. He's in. I think he's late seventies. Right. Um, and we discovered that we were at the same school at different wow. times, and wow. we're both utterly, utterly miserable there. <laughs> <laughs> So, wow. yeah, I don't know what it's doing. Ooh. Ooh. That's what it's doing today. Is it always up to something? <laughs> that's what it's saying. 
today. They are wild, those things. I've only ever, I've only ever sort of played through bends as like a distortion. Yeah, no, well, um, you can use them for... But, and when you switch it off, it usually makes a really good sound as well. <laughs> I've got a... I'm, show, I'm ashamed to say I've got, a, I've got a virtual one on my iPad. Have you? Yeah, it's quite good, actually. It's, it's pretty random. It's just about... It's, it's, it's similarly random to the, um, to the real thing. Yeah, well, I think... Oh, they're really cool and you know like you said you can put things through them and make yeah yeah that which we did on our last record we used it for loads on loads of stuff because i'd only just got it so i had to right have it on everything you know <laughs> yeah 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 and um there's one sound that i'd made for one of the tunes which is a really like a really an acoustic tune and i made this and we used to call it the reversing lorry because that's what it sounded like you know um, right, right. When you've got like co op lorry backing up to unload yeah. food. And um, Jeff had it on a pad. He sampled it off of the rec off the multi track for him to play it live. And it drove me fucking mental because it's so slightly out of tune and really yeah. like the most brutal sound for a, a, you know, for such a, a really beautiful song that Beth was singing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's... that was from the VCS3, so there were quite a lot of oddities from that, you know. But there's a that that album. Um, presume you're talking about thirteen. Third. Sorry, third. What am I talking about? Third. Yeah. Um, well, we haven't got there yet. We got to three. We got to three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I was obsessed with that album, and, and um, it was through that that I kind of just I found Silver Apples, and yeah. when I found Silver Apples, there was a lot of kind of obviously a lot of stuff that you'd been influenced by. And yeah. I think that sort of slightly out of tune since was a big, yeah. sounded like a big part of that. It um, really was, yeah. Yeah. And Silver Apples, when I first heard them, uh, I think I read about them in Wire magazine. And I, I went to, I was in New York and there used to be this amazing shop in just off Lafayette called Other Music, I think, or something. Do yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Record shop, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of pre-internet. Um, yeah really brilliant, yeah brilliant shop and it was brilliant wasn't it so you mm. could find all the stuff you could never find anywhere yeah, yeah and yeah, i yeah. found a silver apples record there and right. um, cd actually not vinyl and uh i didn't believe that it was old i thought somebody had made it now right and, yeah you know and was tr like passing it off as some retro thing they'd found with a whole story behind it you know yeah bloody amazing amazing that did you see him when he when he performed a few years ago when he, he did a tour a few years ago yeah we had him playing at um uh what's it called all tomorrow's parties with us in new york oh, right and okay. he came up on stage and played one of the tunes that's really massively influenced what's it called oh, um wow. we carry on 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 that record. oh that's so, his favorite yeah. tune i love that tune uh well that is like silver ruffles really isn't it you yeah know? yeah yeah um he came on and had his oscillator and was playing with us. It was oh, really amazing. good. Yeah. Yeah. And, no, it's very cool. And I, I, I the, yeah, the out of tuneness because they were just mm. oscillators yeah. tuned to notes with like, um, uh, what are they called? Like a Morse code telephone thing to right. switch it on and off. Right. And that's how he played it, I think. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Right. Okay. Yeah. And the oscillators are not quite in, you know. Yeah, amazing. Because they, 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 um, they kind of got really massive, kind of overnight, and then kind of vanished, didn't they? Yeah, they had I a really think, weird career. Yeah, I think, I think, I think they played in Central Park on some massive yeah. gig. Yeah, yeah, and um, you can see pictures. It looks ridiculous, you know, with yes. all that kit, just the two yeah. of them. And um, but then I and think the it's like, people. Yeah, it's crazy, and then. Yeah, I don't know. Their story is pretty weird, isn't it? And the drummer so they, died. Didn't he? Yeah, he died relatively recently. I think what happened was they got signed to a major label. I can't remember which label it was, whether it was like CBS or Columbia or someone like that, some massive label. And um, they signed them, and the front cover was them sitting in a, I think it was an airplane cockpit. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the back cover was them sitting there but with sort of I think it was like drug paraphernalia or something oh. kind of hang, <laughs> hanging around in the in the cockpit of the plane right 
And I think that the record company got really upset about it and dropped them. Oh. And, and that was the beginning of the end. And then they just kind of went into, they kind of just, that was it. And that's Mental. what I remember from having read about the story. Yeah, they just kind of like, they just kind of launched and went from nowhere to massive. And then, yeah, and then some weird Disappeared. thing happened. Yeah, and, just, and they got dropped and they just disappeared, yeah. I think they made two records, didn't they? There's a second one. It's, I think it's got banjo on it. Has I've it? heard a track with, <laughs> with banjo on it, yeah. I'm I just know sure. the one, the black and white one with, with the apple on the front. Yeah. Is that, is that a compilation or was that an actual album? I don't know. The one I bought was, yeah, with an apple on the front. The and um, I've sort of, seen yeah. those photos. And um, we had a double album, which was the first C it was the CD, which was the first and the second album, I think, for a while. Me and Jeff yeah. had it when we were working on um, third. And, um, so you weren't really into them before that? We were, yeah. So I, you were? I'd, yeah. I'd found them probably uh late 90s or something in whenever right. it was that they you know that a resurgence and i was staying in new york it would have been like 97 actually um and or even yeah 97 98 oh, so it's well after well after dummy then yeah well after dummy but way before third and just yeah. after our second album and um i i, I carried it with me the 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 fit you know that feeling and like Jeff and I yes. always bring things to each other that we haven't heard before. And that was, that was one thing that we both flipped out. We were working with the Coral actually, remember that, that band yeah, yeah, yeah. happening and we yeah. were producing one of their records and we showed them the uh, Silver Rappers and we also played them an early version of We Carry On, which they absolutely loved. And yeah. we were not sure about it. And like a total ass, I lost the original files of me and Jeff doing it. I don't know. <laughs> I think I must have wiped the drive to record the choral, and on there was our original <laughs> recording. Oh, man. Oh, fucking hell. Um, professional, you know, really high yeah, level yeah, professional. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was on Radar, you remember that, that really cool recording setup like called Radar. It was really good. Yes, yes, I remember it, yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So it went Hard forever. Drives, man. Oh, and I God. still feel guilty about that, where however many years later it is, you know. Yeah, but um, hard drives going, hard drives dying like that, you just feel so helpless, don't you? Because it's just, there's nothing you can do. No, <laughs> it's gone forever, hasn't it? Yeah. 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 I've I'm just recovered own. one, actually. I spent 400 quid on, on getting them to, to recover this hard drive because I had this Did whole album, pretty much a whole album, somebody else's album and some other stuff that I'd done. And they, they recovered it, but it took them nearly two months of sort of biting my nails for two months they got it back yeah. but, but it's yeah is that, was that because the hard drive went wrong it just stopped it just stopped being it stopped being visible the computer just stopped seeing it completely yeah i've got a few drives like that really yeah. annoying so i've had, i've gone into like a what's it called the the sort of the solid state one now yeah because it's the only way because the other ones are just so fragile but yeah it's rubbish isn't it <laughs> But anyway, I was going to ask you about Dummy, because I remember I was a student in Leeds when Dummy came out. When was that? Was it like 93, 2? Yeah, before? something like that. 93. Yeah. yeah. And I remember, for, for me, because at the time I was at Leeds. and um, You were at Leeds College of Music. Leeds College of Music. And I went there in 1990. Yeah. So I arrived there just as the sort of the rave scene was kicking, kicking in. Going, yeah, it was yeah. starting to go into clubs and it had always been out, in, out and about in kind of illegal raves in the fields and then it was going into clubs yeah. um, around that time so there was this whole kind of thing of, of kind of raving going on and, and there was lots and lots and lots of kind of house music and dance music in the charts which I found quite I didn't really like so I was really into yeah. jazz and really into sort of old stuff like the Velvet Underground and whatnot yeah. and then this, and sort of raving but it felt like in the charts there was nothing going on and then then yeah, Porter said that album came out and everyone, I just remember all of us were completely slain by it. It was just like, <laughs> everyone just became completely obsessed and that's all oh, we listened to. Like really nobody fantastic. would just, yeah. Like the, you know, when you're a student, it's like there's, you've suddenly got thousands of friends. It's like you're living in a house of six, all your friends are living in houses of six or 10 people. And suddenly yeah. you've got like 50 people and everyone's just listening to Porter said. Everyone was just wow, obsessed. Wow, fucking hell. Yeah. It that's was, awesome. That's, but that's the effect it had, though. I mean, I don't. Maybe you, maybe you weren't aware of it at the time. Well, were you aware of it at the time? I was. I was in terms of it's really abstract, isn't it? Making music, um, 
it doesn't matter how many people tell you that it's still kind of uh, and i have heard people say that a lot to us over yeah. the years you know yeah um but it I, it's such an abstract thing i remember working on probably some remixes or something with jeff and going in in bath in the city of bath in this studio called moles which is where we mixed dummy and i remember going down the road to get something from hmv and we walked past and went in and they were playing one of our tunes and i remember thinking fucking hell they're playing one of our tunes that's yeah. mad <laughs> and, um, yeah you know i it's really hard to grasp the thing that you do that it goes out in the world and then it becomes something it's somebody else's then and you know that what happens with it i mean i can i can relate to that in that i have records that i love over the years yeah that were seminal for me yeah um uh, at that period and they completely bring that period back and so i understand yeah. it it's just really difficult to actually think that might be something that, that had been part of your creation you know it's really yeah hard. well i mean the thing about that was that that i loved at the time so much was that it felt so so underground and yeah, it struck a chord. It's a bit like Billie Eilish now. It sort of reminds me of that in a little bit. In that it feels yeah. very underground, and it doesn't have, you know, none of that undergroundness was kind of compromised or diluted. And yet, it was also extremely sort of resonated, very accessible at the same time. And that's what I really love. And that's what I've kind of been trying to do as well. Just find a way of making music that everyone can relate to, but it doesn't lose any of its the thing it's... that makes it. Kind of interesting or whatever you know yeah yeah and that's what i think you do do i, th I think it's really important to hang on to it's those balanced, yeah 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 i mean when you talk about billy eilish i'm i i like billy eilish when i first mm. heard what she was doing and mm. the kids have played it endlessly so yeah. i'm slightly sick of it now but um <laughs> i thought the same thing i just thought because usually i hear you know um i quite often hear stuff and i don't really dig it much you know yeah. but um i she sort of popped out and i think it's yeah I, but she's hanging on to something you know i think it is that you need to hang on to what you you really believe in otherwise there's no point in doing it really yes absolutely and i think that when we were working on that record it kept there's a load of us you know three of us came together working on that um from very different backgrounds and right but with one kind of I was thoroughly fucked off with everything that I was doing at that time, you know. Really? Yeah, yeah, thoroughly. I, I used to play jazz as well, all yeah. through the 80s. You played without uh, Blakey? No, it says on Wikipedia. I don't remember it unless I was really pissed. I must have been, no. I, I never <laughs> did. I don't know. You know what Wikipedia You didn't play without Blakey? Huh? You didn't play without Blakey? No. Oh, I'm going to put it on my Wikipedia then. <laughs> put it, you can have it. I didn't do it. <laughs> I oh, okay. I played with Jean Toussaint, you know. Yeah. And um, I, I, somehow somebody connected that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't take it off. It's a good one. I, I know it's mad, but you know that's the mad thing about Wikipedia. Um, if it's been in the press, it's true. And right. <laughs> so they somebody mistakenly put it there, and the press have used it. And when you know they look me up and go. Oh, we, oh, we played without Blakey. Let's put that down, and and yeah. then it becomes true. The yeah. fact that I played with Patty Smith, which I've somebody put on for me, keeps taking up, keeps getting taken off. You know, I didn't see that. I didn't see that on there. It's not on there, <laughs> but, but I did. How annoying is that? Really annoying. It's the new truth, you see, Pete. Is um, yeah, Wikipedia is the new truth. It is. It, um, so no, I didn't play without Blakey, but. Um, but you were playing lots of jazz, sorry to, yeah. You yeah, were playing lots of sorry, jazz. I was playing lots of jazz. And um, actually, we used to play Ding Walls quite a lot. And right. I remember Acid House starting, probably yeah. 87, 88 or something. Yeah. Maybe even yeah. 89, I don't know. You were yeah. just talking about that scene. And um, I, I, you know, we were trying to get our amps out because it would be like you'd play the jazz set. Yeah. And then later, like one in the morning, two, people start piling in and fluorescent shit was going up and yeah. this weird music was happening. And I was yes. like, everybody else is going, what is this shit? And I was going, uh, it's really exciting. I don't know what it yeah. is, but I actually really like it. Um, and the got same with, with hip hop, got, you know? Yeah.
We were going to say we've got we've got youth. Um, what youth has joined us to watch now, and I can I can feel him nodding. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and it was same thing with hip hop. Yeah. Yeah, and then hip hop as well. So Public Enemy, kind of limited view. But I was playing with Clive. You know Clive D Dima. We yes, were doing of course. loads of stuff together, and um, yeah. we we're playing with Jeff Beck. We had this. Uh, wow. session we are now it's really oh. full-on and amazing and um but somehow and i love jeff's playing i absolutely love it and i have done forever it was a point in my life where that was not important to me anymore any of that yeah. i didn't care about the guitar i didn't care about yeah i wanted to know what this new world was with the sampler and what you could do and yeah. kind of new new tonality really kind of yeah where vocals somebody would find a vocal or take a vocal and find a sample and mess of you know cut it up to make it work time wise yeah. then the tuning would go a bit out and it was like or yeah. it'd actually blatantly be in the wrong key wrong yeah. whatever that is but yeah. um and i just thought wow this is the most exciting thing i've heard for ever yeah and that's how i met jeff because he was sampling stuff and not right playing. And um, we discussed this endlessly, like endlessly. 40 cigarettes a day each, sitting, talking, smoking fags, yeah. drinking tea, trying to make music, you know. And so I can relate to this. I can relate to this because you're sitting there with a, with, a, with a bag of jazz chops and you've got loads of jazz repertoire that you know and you're playing loads of jazz and that's what you've, that's what you've learned to play your instrument kind of doing. And now you've heard yeah. this thing which is... Not a million miles away, but it's a completely different process for patients. Yeah. And you're like, how do I, how do I kind of get there? How can I, how can I, I need a passport to get to this new country. That's you know, totally I, it. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's really exciting. And I, I found it with various different music over my life, you know, yeah. you shut one door and, and, and then um, another one opens and mm. believe, you know, step out and believe in it is yeah um, i think you know um so so how did you approach it as a guitarist because it's interesting for me because like, i've always had as a saxophone player i've always loved guitar music so being really into guitar music and then playing the saxophone is like how do i make these two worlds you know i've been trying to sort of make these join these two worlds or like being really into hip-hop it wasn't until hearing Tribe Called quest and then suddenly going oh, yeah shit, I got of course, they're too. really into jazz they're really into jazz brilliant okay this is how i this is how i can I can relate to it that way, you know. Um, you find these kind of little, like you say, like these little doorways that you can kind of go in. So, but I mean, the kind of guitar playing that you were doing on a lot of Dummy was um, a very specific sort of sound that you had. Is that the sound that you had when you were playing jazz as well or something that you just kind of developed no, at this point? it was new because I, I also liked old blues. And yeah. um, I was really into um, British it seems a cliche now, but at the time it was less prevalent. Mm. Um, things like the Ipcrest file. That, that oh, I love that music. Film. Man, um, John Barry. John and Barry, I, yeah. I, um, I had that, my dad introduced me to that film in the 80s, and I, I think it's a brilliant film, and um, I yes, absolutely love everything yeah. about it, um, just the way it was shot and everything. Yeah. And, um, but the music was amazing. and Very Porter's head, actually. Did you use right. a dulcimer? There's a, of course, there's a dulcimer, isn't there? It's in, a um, chimbalon or whatever yeah. they're called. A chimbalon, right, okay. chimbalon or something. Right, okay. But that's yeah. the sound. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. That's the vibe, yeah. man. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, because, um, and so I brought that along, like silver apples, you know, and um, yeah. I, I said, Jeff, check this out. It's fucking awesome. Let's, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and, and all of those things are exciting new. So guitar sound, I was more... No, I, I think I, I had your standard jazz sound, you know what I mean? Telly, right. like um, Jim Mullen was my hero. And yeah. still, I love him, you know. Yeah. Um, but that pure sound. Yeah. But not, he's a little bit advanced. He doesn't sound like Wes. He doesn't sound like Grant Green. He sounds like Jim Mullen. Yeah. And, and he has bends the strings and all that stuff. So yeah. um, that was the kind of sound. No pedals, just, a, just an amp and a guitar. Right. Play. I'm really fucking struggling with it sometimes as well, you know, to kind of, yeah. what, I can't get this, because I think the jazz guitar, God bless it, is, is can't reach where you guys can go. You know what I mean? If I listen to Lee Morgan, there's no fucking way you can get close to when he plays on Blue Train or something and, or with Coltrane and, um, yeah. 
you know and so what you i mean the big thing about on kind of almost acoustic guitar electric acoustic or not distorted guitar is you don't really get any sustain you yeah. know so uh, the, i just abandoned all of that and just went wherever the fuck i wanted to go now yeah you know so tremolo guitar i loved it from spy films yes. i loved yeah. it from jimmy vaughan the um stevie ray vaughan's brother who's like a yeah. texas blues player right okay yeah um all link of ray. that stuff huh link ray link ray absolutely love yeah, it. yeah. love all that i mean the, yeah. the, the, the tremolo on that is so extreme isn't it oh, it's brutal and so what brutal, is yeah. so cool is that he starts without it yeah. And he must have the amp near him because he's just turning, it's getting more. So yeah. he must be turning it up. Yeah. And um, it comes in and when it comes in, it gets more and more. And it's, you know, it's not just switched on. He's turned no. up the knob. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. And it sounds so, like he looks, he looks to how he sounds as well. Like when you hear him, you can see those glasses and those sideburns and that quick. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you hear that tremolo. <laughs> I Someone's know. asking if Joe Pass was an influence. Uh, no, I, I think he, he was, as a, uh, when I was like 18 and listening to jazz, he used to play with uh, Oscar Peterson quite a lot and Ella Fitzgerald yeah. and people. He's yeah. a great, I mean, fuck, he was an amazing player, but there's something, I was more into Wes or Grant Green. Um, yeah. I, there was something a bit too studied about Joe Pass, but I actually yeah. love him though, you know. Yeah. But he, he never, I learned a few of his, I had his book and learned some of his voicings and, and yeah. but. Um, who's, who's the guy who did that album with, um, with Bill Evans, Undercurrent? Was I love it? him. I love him. And he played oh. on, um, he, he, the guy who played on um, that, on that Sonny Rollins album as well. Oh, Kenny Burrell? No. I love Kenny Burrell. But no, there's somebody else I can't remember now. Oh, that's yeah, see, Dr. Kenny Burrell, I was more into him. Just yeah. the vibe that he set up. It was, yeah, it was yeah, yeah. like, you know, you hear it and you just go, fucking hell, that yeah. really pulls you in, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Hall, that's it. Thanks, I was going to say Jim Hall, yeah. yeah he's, he's, Hall. he's an amazing player, isn't he? Yeah, kind of yeah, weird, yeah. but um, yeah. So um, I was also into really early John Schofield as well. Yeah. I think he's always kept the spirit, even yeah, though yeah, the yeah. music is not really my favourite music. But um, yeah. Um, I, I, I saw him a couple of years ago in Bristol Jazz Festival and he played through my Vox amp because he oh, needed really? a Vox so I lent him two two Voxes for it and had a chat with him and it was and I met him in San Francisco as well when we were playing there with Portishead in the same hotel and I just had to go and say hi you know I find yeah. that really difficult to do but yeah, yeah, yeah. he's such a nice guy you know yeah. phenomenal player yeah it's a funny one isn't it that sort of meeting meeting famous people yeah. You want to, you want to kind of, you feel like you know them really well, but you yeah. you can't you can't convey that like in a chat in a hotel lobby. <laughs> hotel it's quite lobby. hard, isn't it? Yeah. I guess awkward. if you play the same instrument, you can kind of like nerd out on on equipment or something and yeah. get go in that way. But if you don't, I guess it's hard. You yeah. Know. Although I I've decided over the years, you know, because you play festivals, like we all play festivals. Yeah. Yeah. Backstage, you're bound to run into people yeah. that you absolutely love their music, and um, yeah. I, I've I've decided over the years that I would never have done this when I was younger because I was way too shy. But um, I, I just think you get so little chance in life to actually meet people that really inspired you. That yeah, I, and and I absolutely love it if somebody says it to me. I mean, not in a kind of egotistical way, just like, oh man, we're so actually you know they might say some really obscure tune that you thought nobody had heard of or anything and yeah i think it's important to make that connection you know not yeah. to be an asshole but you know just to just say thank you yeah yeah totally yeah. And with schofield i i listened over and over and over and over to an album he did in the late 70s called rough house it's absolutely oh it's awesome it's before he got into it's like really i mean actually he had a distorted sound and he was kind of stepping ahead of what the previous generations had done, you know. Yeah. The tunes are quite fusion-y, but, oh, man, it was cool, you know. Yeah, yeah. So 
I could talk to him about that, you know. Yeah. And he played with Miles Davis for fuck's sake. So uh, yeah, right. You know, yeah. Yeah, you're, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're you're going into the first, so, but the Dummy's not the first. Dummy's the second Portishead album, isn't it? It's the first one, and then there's oh, one the called one. Portishead afterwards. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Difficult um, second album, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. I think by the time that one came out, I was just so deeply into Hank Mobley that I just didn't notice anything that was going on in the, you know, <laughs> love... contemporary, in the contemporary world. Were you into <laughs> Hank Mobley? Yeah, yeah. I was. I, I, when I went to Guildhall after Leeds, I went to Guildhall, and I because before that, I, I I'd managed to remain quite open-minded for quite a long time, and then I got went to Guildhall, and I was just like, right, I think I really need to properly learn this this language if I want to. If I want to move past it, I feel like I've got to learn how to how to do it properly. So I just kind of got properly ensconced for a few years and just kind of oh, fair enough. It just ignored the outside world completely. So there's a lot of music, contemporary music from the time that I just didn't hear because I was too too busy transcribing Hank Mobley solos. <laughs> awesome. I think that's totally necessary, that shit. Yeah. It really is. And I think most of the 80s, it was only when I heard Acid House and Hip Hop, Tribe yeah. Called Quest. Yeah. Tribe Called Quest were big and... Um, yeah. Public Enemy, which I just yeah. did not understand how they were doing it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, before that, I was completely ensconced in jazz, like mm. fully sitting mm. there talking about nothing else. Yeah. Subscribing <laughs> solos. <laughs> and, um, oh, man, I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. but I think it's necessary. It gives you this kind of, um, you know, it's, it's kind of any jazz musician you play, uh, talk to, is bound to have at some point done that, you know, that level of obsession. Yeah. It's really impossible to just play it. You can't, yeah. like any music, it's impossible to just play it. But jazz requires, like playing Bach or, yeah. For fuck's sake, if you wanted to play Rachmaninoff three or something, you know, yeah. you can't just jump into that. You, no, you've got to learn the requires, language. requires, yeah. And jazz, but Especially I feel, with jazz where you're, you're, you're recomposing on the spot in that language. Yeah. It's like you, you, you have to, know it so well that you can just you know just chuck it about yeah yeah and then you'll have tunes like Probably. giant steps or moments notice that come up upon yeah. you and you go holy fuck what is going on there what is yeah, going yeah, yeah. on there actually <laughs> um, you know what i mean so um but then all of a sudden i imagine you're the same you just go oh yeah i've had enough of that now i don't want yeah, to do yeah. that now yeah well for me but, it was always like the reason i did it was in the first place was you know, was, was always to try and find my own voice. I thought, okay, I can feel like my voice is hidden in here somewhere. So I'm going to kind of dig until I find it. And that, yeah. that, that kind of decision took a long time to kind of get through. And I kind of got to the point where I almost, I almost lost, lost, um, lost sight of that. And really? I was almost, yeah, I, I was, I got so far in, I'd almost <laughs> kind of like let go of the lifeline, you know, to pull me back <laughs> up again. It's like one of those. And I was in this yeah. new world and, and, and I was just playing bop and then I sort of suddenly remembered like, oh no, hold on a minute. I'm only doing this just to try and join these worlds. I just sort of, sort of climbed back out via Acoustic Ladyland, really, you know. Well, I would, I would say yeah. the same thing. I felt exactly the same. And I had this realisation that that was not it. And I had almost yeah. let, let the life go line go. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good analogy. Yeah. But I think you have got that... Um, individual voice i would know you and it's it is like guitar do you know it's not like yeah. guitar, but it's got that kind of fucking hell kind of the the thing you know that this um that fucking phenomenal energy and i've not heard anyone else play like you either really i can tell yeah. you Thank and you i really like it. it well but you know it's kind of um i think you've done what you wanted to do and i'm sure yeah. there's way more to go you know yeah, I mean, I feel, yeah, I feel like I, I kind of, I'm, yeah, I, I got out in time. <laughs> yeah, well done. <laughs> How do you feel now if, if you've got a straight ahead jazz gig? What do you feel? Do you know what? I, oh, whenever I, whenever I say yes to a straight ahead jazz gig, I have to practice for about a week. Yeah. Just to remind myself of the tunes and stuff like that and to get myself past the point of kind of really familiarizing myself with the language and get to the point where I can physically do it. And then, and then, oh yeah, no, sort of remember where I was last time I did this. I was, oh yeah, I was getting into that and sort of then try and try and remember yep. where I, what I was investigating. And, and cause you know, I, I want to always go with this fairly experimental approach of like, right. Oh, you can do this with this tune as opposed to I can just about play it and that's about it, you know? So yeah, yeah every time I do, it <laughs> takes me like a, at least a, a week of solid practice just to kind of get to that place again. 
to actually enjoy the gig. And then I really right. enjoy the gig and I record it and listen back to it and love it and go, right, I'm going to do this again. I'm just going to do this every night all the time. And then don't do another one for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just did a gig back in last year the, in the autumn in the London Jazz Festival with some old friends who I'd kind of abandoned that time before, yes. um, just before Portishead. Um, fantastic players, you know, and I mean, phenomenal. And I decided to play a set of Grant Green tunes, you know, old Grant Green tunes. And um, yeah. I really enjoyed it. But yeah, and then loads, of, not loads of people, a few people said, would well, you want to do it here? And do you want to do it there? And I thought, no, I don't actually. But we did mm. book in one more, which got cancelled because of this thing that's happening. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought, no, I don't want to go back there. But it was the first time for literally, what is it, 30 years since 1990 mm. that I have done a few straight jazz gigs and just wanted to leave. I could not. <laughs> I just didn't want to play Stella by Starlight anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think I've got nothing to say in that world. For me, it feels like now where I'm kind of producing, really, um, I feel like now it's expanded where I'm making the track. It's like the whole band is now what used to be a solo. I'm now doing with a whole with band, band almost. It's not yeah. improvised. Well, it, it kind of parts of it are improvised because I make up the parts by improvising. So I'm, I'm always kind of soloing anyway. Yeah, you know, and then recording it and finding little bits of it and turning that into parts. So I'm still, oh, yeah. still wow. yeah, there's still everything comes from an improvising beginning. Yeah, um, but That's um, good. which is yeah, well, it's the only way I can do it because I always feel like writing is such a a staid and slow and careful process compared to playing, um, which is always so freeing. And and I always felt that the difference between those two states, I just felt find them baffling. So I try and when I'm writing, try and make it feel as free as I can. And that usually just comes from like pressing record and improvising with whatever instrument it is. Like it might be a, a drum thing or a bass thing or a guitar thing or keyboard right. or sax or whatever it is. I'm yeah. just mucking about and then chopping it up later. But great. I feel now that like, yeah, what used to be a solo is now turning into like trying to create a picture with a whole, a whole band thing. So it feels, yeah, like you say, when you want to go back, you kind of go back <laughs> there and you think, oh, it's not, because it used to be, life used to be really simple. It was just like, yeah. sort of just put, stick on the metronome and just practice the saxophone all day, you know. And that was yeah, it. and then go and do a Great. gig. And then go and do a gig, you know. Or and, maybe two. And work it all out, what you've, what you've been practicing. It was very simple. Yeah. And sometimes I think, I want to go back to that and sort of manage it for a day. And I'm like, I, I'm not really, I, I prefer kind of inventing songs now. Yeah. You know? No, I think once you've gone from that, then you, it's going to be yeah. hard to get back, really. Yeah. I still enjoy listening to jazz and we have um, a really nice stereo in the kitchen, which is where right. we all hang out. So yeah. that was a bit of a revelation actually. Why don't we put the, all the records and the vinyl in the kitchen? Yeah, it's great idea. Two decks and fucking great big speakers. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then we listen to the records rather than having somewhere where you don't, you just watch telly. So that was a bit of a revelation. So yeah. I'm playing all my own blue note vinyl and you know, yeah. all the time. It's fucking great. I yeah, love it's it. amazing. Yeah, and it's so nice to listen to that music when you're not kind of under pressure to learn that song or to learn yeah. the solo or to go and do this gig or do that gig. Yeah, just to listen to it as music that you know it incredibly well. Like yeah, you, yeah, you, you can hear everything that's going on in it. Um, I, you're, I yeah. am so excited by it. Sometimes I was listening to "Search for a New Land," um, you know, the Lee Morgan record. Yeah, and I was shouting at the top yeah. of my voice, going, "Come on, fucking come on!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know. Um, but I and I did play that tune in the in that festival. But I'm I have no desire really to play it. I just want to hear it, you know. Yeah. And that and that recording on that day was great, you know, that they yeah. did in really Van Gelder's studio, and um, that's joy. Yeah, I love that. Mm. Um, mm. No, I, what were you just saying? Um, I think improvising. Actually, I've just started doing it more. Um, mm. uh, recording improvisations, and going right. and. I'm just nervous about it because I, there's some sense that if you're going to call yourself a composer or a producer or whatever, that you need to have a like particularly com composition. You need to sit there and write it out. And, you know, I don't know, even after all these years, I still kind of feel that, but it's absolutely, and I, that means I never do anything. So actually mm. just sit down with something, play, record it, and you've got the basis of a tune. 
you know. Yeah. Um, the, thing I've, the thing I've kind of learned about is that I, I'm really shit at um, being able to objectively tell whether something I've done is good or bad at the time that I do it. And I, I'm really good at doing that sort of later, whether that's a day later or a week later or a month later or whatever it is. So now yeah. I don't, I just record and don't even think about whether it's any good or not, whether I can make a song out of it, whatever I can that's do. Brilliant. I mean, obviously I've got kind of one ear on, on shape or form or I might, I'm doing it for a reason, you know, like, like maybe it's a scale. I'm, I am sort of, I'm not just blowing, like I'm not, I'm not thinking about No, anything. no, no, I, I get am, it, I get it. I do have a sort of speculative ear sort of listening out for little things, but I don't sort of make a decision as to whether they're useful or not um, until later. And the number of times I've done that and in my head it's like, this is crap, what are you bothering for? Just forget about it. And they're like, no, I'm going to carry on with it. You know, they've got this argument going on in my head. Yeah, yeah, and then and then later on, I'll listen back to it and just like it's all it's all usable. I could use all yeah. of that, you know. These bits that I was brilliant. telling myself were shit are actually are actually usable. So yeah, once you've had that a few times, you you learn not to trust your, the voices in your head. Yeah, <laughs> and then I think if you come back come back with a purely conceptual, like you 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 record it in a purely emotional place, you're just playing from the feeling, and then when you come back to it, you come from a purely conceptual place of like, right, I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to yeah. take that note. And there's no feeling involved at all. And I find separating those two processes out has made life so much easier now. And also you, um, because you're working with other human beings, ultimately, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, you get their input in all of the bands that you've done. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, somebody will play it what your idea or they might have an idea within your i don't know how it works with you guys but ultimately it's not just you that's going to play it so you've you've created something for other human beings to play which which then brings another thing to it yeah another kind of authenticity in a way it's, yeah yeah i i i i was talking to you about seb's project that you play on uh pulled yeah. by magnets yeah um and how how that worked and you were talking about tritones and um <laughs> well, that's just that's just me. <laughs> that's just me. Whenever I whenever I play, it, I've always just got tritones going on my tritones going in my head all the time. Um, just yeah, because it's all quite sort of epic. But um, yeah, you know, it's it's the same as he's always done it really. Um, in terms of what he gives us, in that he'll you'll have melodies and things that he's written, and then there'll be bits that are open, but the open bits will have a structure. There might be a scale. Um, or there'll be a bass line that he gives Neil that's like four bars round and round and then another four, the different bass line and you go back to this one. But sometimes the arrangements can be quite convoluted. Yeah. Um, not, I don't mean convoluted as in overcomplicated. I just mean they can be quite involved. Put it that yeah. Way. yeah. Um, and there'll be bits of melodies that you've got to use as a cue to get into this bit. And then yeah. I guess the idea is as well that you're... I guess as well, because I've been sort of interpreting his music for a while, that I, yeah. I, I kind of know how to solo in a way that sounds similar to the writing. Yeah. So, well, maybe... I couldn't find the difference between, of course, there are times when you can, but generally I couldn't yeah. tell how improvised it was or from any of you, actually, you know. Yeah. Quite yeah, a loose... There are definite melodies and then there are definite open sections as well. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's, it's beautiful, and I, I, th I think that thing of um, creating for other other people to play, you know, mm. brings this this kind of this kind of massive extra thing from when you're sitting down, just either improvising or writing on a piece of paper. I have I have a method that I've used a lot where I make a code, you know, like Bark um, use the letters of his name. Uh, no. To, oh yeah, B A C. H well, I think H, H is flat. B B flat exactly. Yeah. So, um, and a B is B flat. Anyway, yeah. Well, you, exactly that, but I don't think it matters actually. I think right. I mean I I write down the alphabet, then I write all the notes, A B C D E F G, and then A sharp, yeah, etc., and then A flat, etc., until I get to the end. Hold on. So when, I, when you go, you go A B C D E F G, and what do you do when you get to H? H sharp. Um, I go A sharp, yeah. It's so random. A sharp, B sharp, C sharp, D sharp. You go through yeah. the sharps. Yeah. And you go through the flats. Yeah. And then if that is not enough, I'll start at the beginning again. So you've okay. got the alphabet plus its notes. Um, yes. And then I'll take a word like exploitation. I was doing something for Colston wow. Hall. Wow. 
and I took slavery, exploitation, cruelty, all words, and then they were that was a set of notes. Wow. Um, and I then you've that. got that. And if you don't like the sound of the fourth note, you can change it. It doesn't matter. There's no yeah. rules. It's just a way of getting things started, yeah. Yeah. Getting chucking paint on a piece of white canvas so that it, yeah. ah, I've got past or writing anything down, you know. So Yes. Um, I think that's really important what you're saying is that that very first stepping in, stepping yeah. over the line, crossing the threshold. Yeah. And and How, fighting the voices in your head, like you said. Well, yeah, Get I don't fight them anymore. I don't fight them anymore. I, don't fight them anymore. No. I ignore them. Because, yeah. I, because, I, because, of, because I think that if you go into it, go into it, like your first impulse of I want to write some music is, is coming from an emotional place of, of this urge. Yeah. And so you're going into it with an open heart. And if you go into it with an open heart and then your voice your, in your head start telling you things your heart's wide open and, and these things it tells you go straight into your heart and these yeah take like everything to heart yeah and it's really hard to, to and so the experience becomes more about wrestling with yourself than actually enjoying making any music so yeah. what i find now is if I, I go into it with an open heart and then when those voices come in i say well okay maybe it is crap but let's wait until the the the, the sort of the session where i sit down and chop it all up and analyze it later to decide if it's yeah. crap and now we're just gonna just gonna carry on with the feeling of it until we have until we feel like we've got everything out. Yeah. And then we'll great. worry about whether it's good or bad next in the next session. And then yeah. you do that and then you do that and then it's great because then you're not in an emotional place when you do come back to you're not going, Oh I love this is brilliant. You know, you're just going, oh, Yeah, you know, change this, you know. So <laughs> you separate those two areas out. It's interesting, isn't it? That uh, creativity is such a difficult well, for me it is and I, for, I always assume it's really, I don't know how difficult it is for some people. There are prolific writers who are, uh, somebody like Elton John, for instance. In, I know. Where's, where's it all come from? I think Elton John, man. I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Have you read his book? No. Is it good? Oh, incredible. I'm not a huge fan of his music. I Me neither. Say. No. Um, and so when, um, Adam, our drummer, said, oh, I've just been to see Rocket Band. I was just like, oh, what was that like? And he says, brilliant, actually. So I was like, okay, I watched it, it was, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And then I, I read the book, and man, it's one of the best books I've ever read. And he's like... Really? Yeah, fucking incredible book. Such a brilliant book. And um, and yeah, he's just like... One of, the, one of his days was like, got up, cleaned the house, watched football on TV, wrote Candle in the Wind, <laughs> went to London, bought a Rolls Royce, bought a Rolls Royce, Came back home, Ringo Starr came for dinner. That was Fucking just like one day, one day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he never spent longer than an hour on any of his songs. He just said, that's fucking right. mental. Where's it come from? So, and there's so many people like that, that, that are prolific writers. Um, oh, yeah. You know, so I battle with those ghosts as well. That, uh, and, and sometimes not actually even knowing what it is I'm trying to do, you know, I think. Um, so that's why I have those systems that I really like, you know. I love that. Uh, yeah, it's it's just a way. I just I just I I listen to a program I think on Radio Three about Bach and I think Shostakovich and a few other people had used that code, and I I didn't really understand how they were doing. I really still don't actually, but um, how they get what those string quartets, you know, that Shostakovich string quartets. How the fuck? Um, but it's a start and you could you could reharmonize what you're doing you could you know it's a start is really what it is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and um i also love the the free random thing of it as well yeah. so I've, I've written pieces for you know eight or ten guitars and they've got the three lines going on written like that and one of them is is the same line but inverted yeah um, backwards and there's no harmonic uh sense to it if you like yeah and you play and you i've told everyone to move to the next note when they want in their groups yeah. somebody would move to that next note there's no timing written yeah um, and what happens is like this intense the thing that you could never have planned you know and like free yeah. improvising yeah mm. um but with structure as well it's a yeah. little bit yeah i i mean i just find it really exciting and i reckon mm. if you find something exciting 
then go with it, I reckon, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, I reckon now now would be a good time because Instagram cuts you off after an hour. Okay, well. So we should hang up and come back. Yeah. After that? Yeah, You've okay. Got You've got time? Brilliant, yeah. okay. So Let's hang do up, it. How hang do you up, hang up? Straight back. How do you um, hang up? There's a button that says end at the top right, I think. So we'll see you, everyone in a minute. Um, yeah. Well, everyone, come back. We'll be back in 10 seconds. Okay. Okay. Top right. <laughs> Oh, I'm live. <laughs> I don't think anyone's watching though now. Um, hopefully everyone's going to be coming back. I'm doing my hair, a little, little tweak of the hair. Adrian's back already. There we go. Hello, Adrian. Hello, Francie. Hello, Adrian. Uh, hello, Kush. Um, there we go. Hello, Ruth. Okay, wait for Adrian to join. <sighs> gotcha. There he is. Back again. Hello. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I look. love that man. That that idea of the um. Are you changed your changed outfits? Have you, have you got no? I'm not changing out. I'm just. Cha I could do. Um, <laughs> now I'm changing positioning. Changing positioning. I'll okay. be here now. That's good. Um, go. I love that. I love that thing of the alphabet. That's brilliant. So, what do you do with your name? Like like Bath did. I could do it with my name. I haven't done it with my name. I've always used a word. A word. Yeah. That, yeah. That I thought was pertinent to whatever so the guitar thing the first time i did it was at colston hall in bristol yeah which lord colston it was the opening of the new part of the building you know that front bit in the yeah um which cost a lot and was very con controversial in in um with many people because lord colston was a slaver and he was a really bad one yeah. well they're all bad aren't they but um I mean, 200 years ago, they had a different attitude to all of this, but whatever, it was still... And 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 a lot of us that think, many of us think in Bristol, why are we why are we still using his name on buildings? Yeah. He didn't even actually put money into. It's just a celebration of this fucking asshole, you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a statue that we want to pull down. And Colson Hall is changing its name. So anyway, I, I was commissioned to, like many people, to do a, something there. For the opening night and i was using 60 electric guitars and wow. i you, you know it had to be quite simple because the kind of there were there were sort of amateur players as well as all of the you know pro players i could grab from bristol right so it was real big spectrum of joy to be playing making this yeah. racket together you know yeah um so i wrote these super simple melodies but i based them on those words like slavery exploitation cruelty whatever yeah um and um and it and it kind of it was really abstract of course um mm. but such a fantastic noise you know um, yeah. um that i i've done it quite a lot since um right. will gregory and i have done a few tunes we did a, a score for the passion of joan of arc and um Wow. We used we used Joan I can't even remember now, but we used those words to make a code to have a, Joan was a four note tune that we improvised within. Um and it just it works, you know. There's obviously I mean, I've written tunes that aren't written like that, but I really like what yeah. happens, yeah. And have you got a, is there any kind of rhythmic kind of uh, element to it or not? No, there isn't at the moment, but I was no. just thinking about that because I think that's to decode or to find a way of doing a rhythmic aspect. And I'm absolutely certain that Shostakovich would have. Yeah. Oh, so Shostakovich did it as well. Yeah, he used his own name, I think. Uh, I mean, that's right, what okay. this radio program was implying, you know, and his, um, so yeah, a rhythmic, I don't, I haven't yet, but I would like to find a way of doing that. Is there a name for this process? The probably is I've no idea. I right, I, okay. I literally heard it on the radio and then Try went again. home and and sort of did my own way of doing it, which is probably entirely wrong. You know, like you were you talk about um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you know, um, like Bach for instance, instance. And I mean, I wasn't, I was not classically trained i didn't have formal training yeah but i'm grasping as much as i can over the years and through jazz of course you learn harmony and substitution and tritones yeah. and um, tritons, uh, yeah. 
so, and I understand that Bach has things that are running at half speed and inverted and all sorts right. of things happening within that simple structure, like that fantastic piece that he, people used to give him a set of notes, didn't they? And uh, do you know about this? No. Fucking amazing, man. I think it was one of the Austrian princes, like Wilhelm, or I, don't, I can't remember who it was. Somebody will know. Um, and he had travelled for two days to meet him. He was a musical guy. He was really into music. And Bach arrived as an old fella. And they gave him this really difficult thing. And everybody was improvising on these things, you know, a bit like jazz, if you like. And yeah. they gave him this set of notes and it had some chromatic shit in it, which it didn't usually in, in those days. And he just, as an old fella, and just having traveled two days in the bumpy coach, just smashed it. And it's yeah. a piece that we all know, you know, and um, it's absolutely incredible. And it would have been based on a set of rules that he used for improvising, you know. Yeah. Wow. I think there are all these systems exist in the world, don't they? And um, yes, um, I like the idea of it being something that Zahn um, says. Is it a cryptogram? I don't know, but if it, if it, I hope it is, because that sounds like a really cool word. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I don't um, know. I, I love this idea of um, these things just to get you over that line, you know, to to get you into the zone to start working. You know, I think that's that, what it's about, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I when I've. I've done, done a few of these interviews. I've normally try, try to ask people what their how, yeah, what, what's their process? How do you go from from you know blank page to to something? You know, yeah. Um, and there's a lot of there's a book called The Art of War. Do you know that? No, no, the War, no. The war of Art. Do you know that? War book? of Art. No, I don't. Is it? I wouldn't recommend it particularly. Um, oh right, okay. It's not. But the guy was just talking about this whole concept of resistance and how he has, he particularly has a lot of problems with resistance, like resistance being the thing that stops you from getting into it, you know, and he's got yeah. ways of doing it. But I think he makes a bigger deal of it than it needs to be and ends up, ends up the resistance is bigger than it needs to be just because he kind of puts, gives it too much attention. Right. Um, but I like, I like the idea of these little tricks that, because they translate across any different art form, don't they? It doesn't have no, to completely. Be, it be anything. Like, yeah. Know, how do you get into writing poetry if you're a poet? You know, how do you, where's, where's the first word come from? Like some people, you know, it might be from just from an emotional place. But then, I mean, like Seb, for instance, um, you know, <laughs> when I've said to him, like, how do you, what's your process? He just says, I don't know. I just kind of reach into my head and write down what's in there. And it's just so like, it's in notation. Yeah, he'll just, he'll just sit down and write down what's in his head. You know, just reach into his head for some music and find it. <laughs> that's brilliant <laughs> Which is like, and Shabaka does that as well um, he just basically Shabaka's just got a Sibelius and he sort of plays Sibelius like an instrument he just sits there he goes to the British Library where there's no dis distractions and puts on his headphones and just plays amazing, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and just, just does it all day long and just ends up at the end of the day with like 12 hours of music and then goes back and turns it into stuff and edits, edits it but I think he starts off he said he starts off with just an idea he'll just come up with an idea and just or he'll just start somehow and then tweak what he's just make tiny adjustments to what he's done and keep keep just adjusting it till it becomes something. That's but, brilliant. I, I had a I had a composition lesson with a guy whose name I've forgotten, Brian. He lives in Edinburgh. He's a really interesting guy. I can't remember his second name. He's fantastic. Um, I met him up when I was working with the band, a guy called Martin Green, who's in a band called Lab. I know Martin. No, Martin. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fantastic guy. And, and yeah. he'd worked with this guy. And um, I, I went to have a compositional lesson and he had Sibelius. And he said, well, let's turn off the sound of the keyboard, p record and just play anything. Just play anything. And we played anything. And then he said, well, let's still not listen to it and look at it. Okay, what? Let's move. Let's make that. Okay, well, we'll repeat that. And my, I'm okay with music, but um, I couldn't look at it and know what it's going to sound like. You know what I mean? No, um, me so it, that was not a help, you know. Um, and then well, was we he hearing it? Then? Was he looking at it and hearing it? Do you think? No, none of us were hearing ah. it. And he would okay. he'd take this and pull this one down an octave, and then make that a motif just visually, and wow. then turn the sound up and go, oh, that's crap. 
Um, all right, well, let's, that's good, though. You know, it's not dissimilar to what you're doing, like jamming and taking the yeah. bits. Yeah. And um, I, I just thought I've never done it since because I can't fucking use Sibelius yet. Yeah. I, find it, I need to spend Probably. a bit of time. Now is the time to learn Sibelius. Well, we're all... <laughs> <laughs> well I'm going to learn Ableton, but apparently at some point. Is that what you're doing? Okay. Yeah. I've got a list here um, of things list. to learn, <laughs> which I've totally ignored. Um, uh, and I thought that was a good method, you know, it's just to method. get through. Yeah. Because ultimately nothing for us now, and, and you know, language, even language is really up for grabs. Words, you know, yeah. it, there aren't the same rules that there were 200 years ago. Um, we can take, the, you know, tonality can be what we want it to be. As yes. long as it's acceptable to yes. your ear. And I, you know, hip hop taught me that very straight out of jazz that yeah. it's a, like a quarter tone flat, but it sounds fucking brilliant. So yeah. leave it. Yeah. You know, so I, I think as long as you believe it and can hear when the result, I mean, with the guitars, like I was telling you, with the, the conducted moving on with the notes mm. and mm. the three lines. I found it really exciting. I mm. thought this is absolutely fucking brilliant. I love it. And I can stand by that, you know. Yeah, um, great. Yeah, so th that's all you need, isn't it, really? It's not going to be a Billie Eilish song, but it's, or a Portishead song, but it's, um, it's yeah, but a piece I feel of music. Like, I feel like both of those, both of those Billie, Billie Eilish and Portishead do, do manage to uh, incorporate some of these more uh, artistic, should we say, kind of elements into that kind of format. That's what that's what I that's what I loved about it so much, especially Porter's Head, where it was it was able to really yeah it was well it was cinematic for a start, but it was also the atmosphere was really strong. But also, like I said before, it just felt like you were you were you were drawing from incredibly wide range of, of influences, but managing to sort of package them in a way that was suitable to play on the radio or whatever it whatever it was at the time you know i think i think that's kind of what we were doing really i mean we were actually thinking uh i remember thinking i i don't know we had friends you know like um and other musicians hanging around this the studio or working in other rooms and they'd come in and go fucking oh that sounds amazing and we'd mm. go does it um <laughs> you know <laughs> great um so felt a bit of confidence even within the kind of lack of confidence about it you know yeah some of it was a real struggle to make and it was like lego all over the floor you know yeah um, we were comping things out of fucking like and we were working with tape as well and oh, yeah <laughs> and, a, and an atari you know oh really is, <laughs> yeah one akai sampler and atari and tape for the live instruments you know yeah. There's no Pro Tools, no nothing like that. It was really yeah. primitive, if you like. But at the time, it felt like, you know, really high tech, twenty four track tape machine. Fucking hell, you know, yeah. that's amazing. You know, yeah, and yeah, yeah. We were we were used to the unwieldy kind of it syncing up and all that stuff. It was fine. Um, uh, so it was it was a really weird process of making it. You know, yeah, um, um, and. And, you know, some of it was kind of ironic, you know, in a way, um, like Glory Box, for instance. Um, he, I mean, Jeff said to me, play a solo. And I went, hey, and um, he said, yeah, play like a solo, play a solo. And and, you know, I just played like a bluesy kind of solo on it. And um, I was going, fucking hell, really? Um, but he gave me the confidence, you know, to that that could be what it was there, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, um, and we all liked it. I mean, it was it was like, oh no, that's from that world. I can't have that, you know? Oh man, but, I, so, I know that so much. It's so funny you say that. Cause it's like, I, I, there's all this stuff that I, I learned when I, you know, playing jazz. There's, I guess, sort of chromatic kind of dissonant things that you just can't do in, that I just can't do in Melt Yourself Down. Or I couldn't do in Melt Yourself Down cause it's very specific kind of pentatonic stuff. You know, and you start playing out kind of language and it just sounds shit you know but yeah. on the, on the last on the last <laughs> album because i could th i think because i was recording at home in my studio that it was just like i could just sort of noodle about for an afternoon on the saxophone solo and not 
be under pressure to perform on the day in the studio. Yeah. Um, I think because of that, I was able to sort of start exploring back into some of that language again. And actually, I think because I was so sure of the context, I think that's what you're talking about, is that the, yeah. con the context that you're doing it in, you've designed the context, you've, you've, you've designed the sound world, and you're very sure of what that sound world is. So now I can drop in something from a different sound world, and it, it's almost like it goes through the prism that you've created. And yeah. because it's going through that prism, when it comes out the other side, it's okay, because it's, it's a portis head thing. And it's yeah. a bit like... And, and I'm I'm starting to sort of just starting to kind of like feels like sort of gently sort of opening the tap and letting some of these other uh, things Great. come through, you know, yeah, um, very tentatively. And then sometimes I go too far. It's just like no, it's jazz wank, you know, this really yeah. sounds like wank. But then yeah. a little bit of it's all right. And it's it's yeah, it's, just, it's and it's a nice feeling because it feels like that it's that feeling of kind of worlds kind of how did it feel? How did it feel when when you put your put your old hat back on and it was okay to wear it again? Um, I, I, it was all right, actually. And yeah. I, I think, you know, because it wasn't me that was trying to fight for, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen some kind of monster, uh, Metallica. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. God, I yeah. mean, I, it's essential <laughs> viewing for everyone, yeah. I think. And um, there's a point where the guitar player, player, I can't remember his name. I'm not really, a, um, they're talking about solos. And obviously he wants to play millions of solos. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the singer James and uh, and Lars are going, they have this kind of really kind of like Beavis and Butthead conversation about yeah. whether you should have a guitar, and the, whether it's ironic or, you know, and you can tell underneath that the guitar player is really fucked off because actually... Kirk Hammett, yeah. <laughs> Kirk Hammett, he really yeah. wants to play guitar solo, but he's yeah. being trying to be intellectual about it and they're discussing it. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. so I, I, it didn't feel like that, I have to say, because we would never have wanted solos on stuff, you know, so yeah, yeah. it was always done with great... And I was, I was past that, well past that. Yeah. If there's somebody, I've played with other guitar players and they say, well, you do a solo. I'm like, no, nah, you're all right, mate, you do it. I'll, I'll just do, I'm digging what I'm doing, you know. Making survives, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, when, and then when we started to play live with Porter's Head, I would, I would stretch out a lot more. And, I, and I've just been digging through lots of our archive film from the late uh, 90s. Oh, wow. Uh, for something we're doing. Yeah, I filmed about 20 hours or more of film and and i'd walk wow. onto the stage it was when it was all happening for us like big well actually the last record we were playing bigger gigs than ever weirdly yeah um, but um and i just give my camera to whoever was on the side of the stage and say just film some shit you know and yeah. the sound from the the camera was really compressed and awesome you know and you'd get whatever it was near would be louder than anything else and what kind of camera was it oh um there were two different ones and one was hi eight and one was mini dv right okay so, so hi eight's like a like um a, 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 a um, what's it called a, a super eight kind of thing so yeah but yeah. digital is it digital, oh, or digital. Analog? i don't know yeah it wasn't it wasn't certainly wasn't super eight or anything okay. it, was, it was cassettes like um i think it's like a mini vhs type right. situation yeah i don't oh, know okay and um that's pretty pretty hip aesthetic now though isn't it that kind it's of very yeah yeah <laughs> and we've used that actually but you know on our live shows to have um fucked up video quite a lot yeah. you know? we have Brilliant. this massive elaborate setup backstage with this guy john minton and a crew with all sorts of shit like i was talking to john about can we have some everything vibrating on the stage and um you know on the screen you know, like, because he had cameras and everything, could it, with the bass drum, could everything vibrate, you know? Wow. And he, so he made this mirror on rubber springs that he could project onto and then film off. And the whole thing was just, blah, 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 you know, like, wow. and, and there was a, it was like going back to like Doctor Who world behind stage, you know? Wow. So we've always had that <laughs> aesthetic. Yeah. So this film actually kind of works pretty good. But I was just thinking, when I was listening to it, how fucking off the dial my guitar often is. And what do you mean by that? Well, just like fucking irresponsibly, like loud and, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, not what was on the record, you know. But actually, I quite like the vibe. And I would always play in between tunes, like make a fucking racket. And um, I thought, what are you doing? I was pissed or something, you know. I'd, um, <laughs> and I just think, actually, I quite like that, you know. It's just. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, fuck off, you know, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. table music, it's, this is what it is. Yeah. Fucking loud, yeah. you know. 
yeah. yeah, yeah. The attitude, isn't it? Yeah. Someone asked a question earlier, like, what is, what's on your list? On the list that you said, you've got a list of things to go and learn in isolation. Oh, uh, this, th that? Yes. Um, contact. The sample okay. thing. Yep. Because I really miss my S1000 and, and I haven't recovered since. I've not been able to do the same work since I haven't got my S1000. What happened um, to your S1000? Huh? What happened to it? It's over, over there and it's broken. And, right. <laughs> and I can't load up any of the old samples. Or I used to love it, chopping things up, you know, um, and detuning. So I think the contact can do it, but I just can't do it. Um, right. I want to learn machine. I'm now learning about field recording. I'm doing quite a bit of that um, at the moment, which I'm going to turn right. into things. Um, yes. And, and um, more Pro Tools, because I'm absolutely shy. I always have um, a great guy, Tim Allen, works with me uh, on anything I record or produce and stuff. And, um, uh, and a guy called Ali Chant. And they're really good with Pro Tools, and I'm shit at it. I can use it, but, uh, you know, yeah. and I just think, oh, come on, Adrian, fucking learn, learn it. But I don't usually have to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I probably won't, you know. I, can, <laughs> I, like, <laughs> I like tape and radar from the old days, you know. But, right, um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the other thing I wanted to say, wanted to ask is whether you'd give us a little guided tour of your synth collection. Yeah, if you like. Should I flip Lovely. the camera? Yeah, why not? Yeah, Okay. Uh, okay. The internet seems to have settled down now. So you what? The internet seems to have settled down now. So um. Oh, and I was just saying that you crashed. I know you're back again. I'm still here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm going to flip it around. All right. Uh, oh, that's so a good one. That's a good place to start. Okay. Here. Wow. This is this is called a Swarmatron. Oh, Dan Dan Carey's got one. He has, and that's how yes. I got one. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I met him. In Switzerland, when we were playing, we came backstage. He bit was with Baxter Jury, and um, right. we were all had drunk quite a lot. And he was saying, The guys in Baxter's band who was playing before us were going, You've got to check this thing out. What is it? <laughs> it's a swarmatron. A what? The swarm, what does it sound like? It sounds like bees, man. I'm like, <laughs> um, yeah, what else? I don't know. It's just like bees. So, um, there's one, and I've hooked it up. To a keyboard, so you know these things. Yes, mate. Yeah, they can be. Or. Wow, that sounds like Ghost Town. Yeah. Finished chord. <laughs> That's a swarm Amazing. Track. Oh, it's yeah. brilliant. Um, this is a. I love this thing. This is um, a, a late seventies. What's it? A Korg. Uh, wow. Such. Called 3200. It's a polyphonic, super rare. I think there were 200 of them made. Um, wow. It's very cool. I mean, I've only got one hand, so I can't do anything with it. It's wow. a beautiful big polysynth. Um, yeah, that's gorgeous. You've seen that? Yes, I um, that. Yeah. <laughs> Korg, not switched on at the moment. You know, those MS20s. Yes. Process stuff through that. That's really good. Um, yes. Selena underneath okay that's wow. you know your herbie hancock your disco strings oh uh, yes yeah use this on quite a few things yeah that's um, beautiful. usually it gets uh, in the old days they used to just take down one uh note yeah and just have it leaning against the wall with one note taped down and you could just bring it into the mix when you needed it, like a high string line, you know, just one <laughs> note. <laughs> modular. Wow, you've got, there's a lot of modulation, modular stuff going on there. Yeah, there's a lot of, I love this big format. This is the old RA Moog stuff. Um, yes. Super rare, hard to find. It's not all that, but, and it has a sequence, I think. And it's, um, I've got, yeah, I've got a sequencer. Do you have them always already all ready to go all the time? So you can just play any of them as soon as you have the idea. I do, and they're all they're all on the desk as well. So this right. one is doing today. It's doing that. Don't know whether you can hear. Um, oh yeah, Sounds a great. seven. 
and you can etc wow that's um, yeah that's my friend that one um yeah yeah new wow. mini moon yeah three moves i love yeah. it it's really yeah. good sounds, yeah. sounds like a mini move to me yeah um i must admit i have the uh, behringer model d yes i've heard what they're really good they are I've good heard, yeah my friend brought one um here and i thought it sounded brilliant i've got three old uh, three mini moves a new one a really early 70s one and a late 70s one oh, wow. they all sound different all of them sound different but they all sound like mini moods so i really like this and it doesn't go wrong the other two i just i've gone to a repair guy uh yesterday right managed to find a way of getting them there and um because they've just broken you know um, right yeah what else this is a secret weapon it's an awesome it's a bit like the korg it's a p polyphonic ensemble Wow. It's cool. It's got that kind of quite yeah. wonky, if you want, Love you know. Um, yeah, very, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mellotron, you know. Oh, yeah. I thought it was quite new. Is that a new one? It is. It's not an old one. It's the the new ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's it doing? I don't know what it's doing. You know. Um, yeah. <laughs> old Oberheim. Oh wow! That's being white noise at the moment. Nice. And that's cool. I love this thing. Um, yeah, yeah, really good. It's got great. It doesn't have to have white noise. It can be, you know, really yeah. nice. Big sound. Yeah, yeah. Hard on a, yeah. Uh, this side's not working today. I noticed on the sequencer. Right. Is it? Do well, you have a lot of? Do you have a lot of maintenance issues? Oh, endless. Absolutely yeah. endless, yeah. Like a um, fleet of old sports cars or something. It's exactly like that. It's really yeah. annoying. Um, <laughs> like this Jupiter here. It's a Jupiter 4. Oh, Not wow. Gone. Um, is playing up today. Or not today, the other day. Um, right. And needs a bit of looking at. Um, I've got more synths upstairs in my other room. But these, wow. are, these are the main ones I use. There's an ARP 2600, which I love. Oh, look at that guy. Yeah, I think Ben's got one of them, hasn't he? Yes. Uh, looks a bit different to that, actually. His is an older black one, I think. Yeah, that's got speakers on it. Has it? Are they speakers? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, his, his doesn't have that. His, I think his, his must be... His doesn't have red red stuff on it, either. Oh, he's got an Odyssey, hasn't he? No, is he's got... A no. no. He's got a... He's probably got not. a black one. Yes, black, yeah. Yeah, it does have speakers, then, I think. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah, they sound great, those speakers. They're really shitty. They're amazing. Um, what else? This is, um, what is this? This is like a miniature on Martino. You know that? Oh, wow. Yeah, so the, it's got a, a ribbon thing that, you know, yeah. put your finger. And a keyboard does that, which vibrato. Oh, my God. It's very cool. May, a friend of mine, Mika, gave me it. Um, I can't find the name. It's that. Which is really nice. I, think I love Jenny... the, um, the Messian Tarangalida Symphony. Do you know that? I do know it. Yeah, that's got it. I listened oh, to it after you oh, mentioned it, actually. Again. Yeah. Because it yeah. has tritones in it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, very tritony. But it's also the, the first use of the Ond Martino. It was, yeah. Yeah. And I then... think it was the first use of an electronic instrument in music. Or... Was yeah, it? Something. I think so, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. It's like in the and 40s it... or something. And it has... Uh... Oh, can't remember what else. Oh no, I was going to say Star Trek is uh, on Martino as well. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Makes sense. I think that's it for synths. Got a nice, um, looking, nice looking drum kit there as well. Yeah, that's. I uh, just got that actually, and that's an old. What is it? Um, Ajax. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. And it has its old original um, carved heads on it, which sound fantastic. You know. Yeah. But and also this big old bass drum that I use all the time on stuff. And do you, do you play drums as well then, or? Not really, no. No. I like, um, I like to get, uh, it's about Sonics, isn't it? And I just, yeah. um, we were just about to make this record. Um, 
Seb was going to play on it actually, but um, we, we're not doing it now. But um, I wouldn't have had to take this for Seb. But often, you know, it's nice to take some drums for what you might want to the sound you might want to try and get. You know. Yeah, yeah. So I generally have a few oddities. Why is that not flipping? Oh yeah. Um, Another thing, I'm, I'm uh, presumably you've got an e equally astonishing collection of microphones. I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's have a look then. Um, pair of coals. Most people have got these though. Um, yeah, I love those. Yeah, this old old um, U forty seven valve U forty seven, which is completely incredible. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's mics all over. I've I've actually taken a lot in the other room. There's a nice old Neumann valve, little whatever they are. Wow, nice. Yeah, I've got lots of ribbons and uh, yeah, one of them. You know those, oh, yes. RCA, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Some weird shit here. Um, oh yeah, look at those guys. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And then yeah, I've got um, upstairs. Most of the mics are upstairs in the, right. in the drawers. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so doing a, it looks like you're doing. A, are you doing more production than guitar playing at the moment? Or um, I'm not doing anything at the moment. Well, well baby, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am doing some production. I'll tell you, it's, it's funny that the um, the rep, you know the industry is. I mean, there just there just doesn't seem to be the budget to do. I don't know how how one makes records now. Really, you know, mm -hmm. um, I've got the studio here, but I can't really record a band. But what we have done is record something, say. Uh, at another studio and then bring it all here and put my synths on it and stuff. Um, yeah. Guitars or whatever, if that's what we're doing or people use my synths. Um, uh, it, I think it's that the industry is in a bit of a state, isn't it really? For, for like um, getting proper budgets to pay musicians and, and decent studios for live recording, you know? Yeah. Um, it's it's a difficult time, and I, I I I do like I really do like producing and making I like I just like making music, whatever you know, yeah. whether it's playing with somebody, writing something, recording something, producing something. I, I I'm just fully immersed and love all that, you know. Yeah. And I, I I've got a lot of equipment, but it's actually I sold loads just recently because it's it, it's gone past. Um, I don't use it anymore. So, mm. you know, I don't want to be a collector. You become a collector if you like old gear and use it. I use it all the time, you know. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, um, yeah. I, if it's not useful to me, then it's got to go, really. And I yeah. feel like I've got a succinct collection of, it's not that, there's a lot of it, but it's not compared to other people I know that have got an outrageous amount of stuff, you know. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I like I like it, even though it's not small. It feels like everything I've got is here for a purpose. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So, what are you um, what are you working on right now then? Um, I'm doing some rooftop. I've got three. One, I've still thing, one of these. Yeah, and um, the Colston Hall are, and and various venues in Bristol are putting together something for um, like a website of arts and culture and music and we're pre-recording stuff rather than trying to do it live streaming yeah um and somebody's editing the bits of film so um i did an improv on the roof the other day um i did a massive noise for the nhs like a yeah, that was great, man. screaming that. feedback thing cool Love thank that. you yeah and the kids filmed it and i sent them all of the stuff and we mixed it it was off the iphone actually um, and then I did another improv after that, like we're talking about, just what am I going to do? Bang, here we go. Yeah. It, I don't know whether it's going to be any good, but I'm going to do it and switch the phone on and record it on my portable recorder. And it, I like it, you know, um, it's got mistakes in it, but I like it. And so that's, gonna, yeah. that's gone to them. I'm going to do a tape piece. Um, I think I've got it on Pro Tools here. Um, which is sort of Steve Wright. Yeah. Um, 
that I'm working on today. Um, it sounds quite African to me. Does it? It sounds like slowed it's, down African music. Like right. High life, almost like high life guitar, but slowed down. It's because it's high, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, yeah. What it is. It's rhythmic as well. It is, yeah. There's loads of different... Um, it progresses where there's hundreds of them all going at once, like in six and seven and four all together. Uh, it's not done now. So. so it's that, and then... And all, all uh, quite clean, quite clean sounds. It's just writing, yeah. I've just plugged it straight into the desk. Uh, so, yeah. that, so I can hear what, what's going on. And then we, uh, what I would do then is write it out and we play it. Yeah. Or I'd play it, or <coughs> what I have been doing. I don't know whether it's right. That's that's the same thing off of a tape machine. But it's it's at half speed. Yeah. So I'm fucking about with that today. That's what I've been doing. Right, okay. <laughs> um, and that well, incorporating, the, incorporating the half speed tape stuff into what you've recorded into the Pro, to, into Pro Tools. Maybe, I don't know yet. I, it's kind of, oh, I know, let's stuff it on tape and then mm. play it at half speed. I'll probably just go back, scrap the whole lot, go back to the beginning and find another way, you know. Mm. I'm also quite interested in running two tape machines together like Steve Rice where they yeah, phase yeah. and then go out and come back in. Yeah. And then and then have a melody that I can play with that, you know. Mm. Don't know. I'm just scrabbling about. Trying and is to find this the stuff. sort of approach you normally take, or is it because you're in isolation? Because of isolation. It's because I'm in isolation. Got the, you've got the time to experiment with things. Yeah. Yeah. I can and um I wanted to use, you know, Frippatronics, do you know that stuff that Bob Fripp did? Massive great long echoes um with right. two tape machines together the reel on one going across and then onto the other one. So the gap, so it records on the first one and is played on the second one. And right. then it's fed back to the first one again. So you get this wow. huge delays and um, Fripp and Eno used to do it. So, and I wanted to use it on this next record that we were going to do with Seb and um, as a kind of another atmosphere in the background of, of, of the music that would have been not conventional, but much more straight ahead, you know. So what, so what record was this you were going to do with Seb? Um, it's this amazing singer called Laden, who's right. used to be in a band called Cold Specs um, right. on Mute Records. I don't know what's happening with it now because, you know, everything's yeah. in the air. So Yeah. Um, uh, and, yeah, so that's it, really. Um, uh, Martin, I'm doing a thing for Dave... Jay from Bauhaus, who I was a uh, friend of oh. at college back in the 70s. Wow. Um, um, Lots of stuff it. going on. It's great. Yeah, I'm always yeah. trying to. And then kids, five kids, you know. So and then five kids, yeah. Mayhem. As well. Yeah. And any more plans to sort of re do any more Porter's Head stuff? Or? We've been talking to it together, actually, and I'm digging through this archive quite a lot, you know, trying mm. to make some sense of that really and yeah it's been hanging around for a long time and um um i think yeah i think i have no idea what we're doing we're asking about as usual <laughs> <laughs> well it's always best to ask about i think especially yeah. when you've got time to ask about it yeah that's the thing that goes isn't it when you haven't got time you just stop asking about yeah you do and i think it is quite good to to have a bit of time um Sometimes it's good to be right. Christ, we've got to do something. Come on, quick, 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 do it. And you know, you end yeah. up with something because there's a kind of an urgency about it that mm. makes it work. You know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. I'm well, just checking I'm the gonna... time. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go. Yeah, I am. I'm gonna cook supper. So. Um... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great to speak to you. Thanks so much. You man. too, man. Yeah. Really, really nice. Your studio, yeah. Uh, and um, yeah. hopefully we'll do it again in in the in a physical way. Yeah, when, maybe. Uh, I about. could do a recording with you because I'm starting talking to people for a kind of podcast. I put it on hold actually, but um, I'd love to mm. revisit yeah, love our to. world. Yeah, yeah, that'd be brilliant. I'd love to do that. Yeah, maybe do some music or something. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, lovely. I'd love to. All do right, that. okay. okay well, take care of yourself. And you, stay thanks safe. so much. Yeah, take too. care. Bye, -bye. Cheer, man. See ya. <laughs>